Hey everybody, uh, I'm supposed to put my microphone right here. This is where everybody wants it. <laughs> uh, welcome to Ask Aaron for this week. Uh, day late, dollar short, um, lots of stuff going on in my life this week and I uh, didn't have time to film yesterday. But as always, these views are mine, not the churches. Hope they agree and uh, we would love for you to comment in the comment section, continue our conversation about all the things that we're talking about. I uh, started a new message series this past weekend called uh, Still Just As Good. It's about Ebenezer Stones. If you don't know what that is, you can Google it. Uh, lots of uh, cool stuff in the Old Testament about that. So there's gonna be some questions about that and then a little follow up from Christmas. Um, there we go, I think that's it. It snowed. I've been talking about the weather a lot in Ask Aaron, so it snowed, and you should know. That's what I have to say about that. All right, here we go. Question number one. Compared to Bible times, is God silent now, and if so, how come? Um, compared to Bible times, I guess, depends on what you mean by Bible times. If you mean Old Testament, God is not speaking through prophets anymore, uh, in the same way where only one person heard and then spoke to God's people on behalf of God. So in that way, yes. If you're talking about New Testament, you've got uh, the Holy Spirit arriving in uh, Acts chapter 2. So that is the way that God speaks to us now. And um, God speaks to us individually and God speaks through other people when the Holy Spirit speaks to them and encourages them to talk to you. Uh, God speaks through your pastor your Bible study leader, uh, your worship leader, all those different avenues as well. So uh, if you're talking specifically about just, you know, having a single prophet speak on behalf of God to the entire church, then yes. But if you're talking about does God still speak to us, God speaks to us uniquely and individually every single day uh, because he desires a personal relationship with each and every one of us. So um, no, no. God is not still silent, and God is talking a lot uh, to all of us who are following him. So, there you go. What right did God have to give people somebody else's land? Isn't that unfair to the original land owner? Uh, well, all of the land is God's, and God created it, God owns it, God sustains it, and so God can give it to whoever he pleases. I think this was uh, a question regarding my message, which you can watch, hillcityhudson.org backslash media. Uh, you can watch it on Facebook or YouTube as well, Hill City app. Uh, but God is uh, the creator and sustainer of all things. And so God can give uh, land to whoever and whomever he pleases. And in uh, this specific instance, uh, the land had been taken over by people who were not following God and not doing um, as he asks and commands us to do. And so, uh, you know, God wanted to give it back to his people. Is that unfair to the original landowner? Well, the original landowner is God. So, no, it's not unfair to him. And also, um, you know, there, there have been all sorts of... Uh, things happening in in that land where God, um, you know, wants to give it back to the people uh, who follow him because uh, he wants them to be able to use it and uh, use it to glorify and honor him and all of that kind of stuff. And then here's kind of my last thing that I want to say about this is, is just that fairness is not a biblical principle, right? We've said this before. Uh, God is not fair with us. If he was, grace wouldn't be a thing. And so uh, we don't need to look at scripture seeing fairness. Uh, God is just, and uh, that is a totally different thing that doesn't require fairness in every circumstance. So, um, you know, if you want to go back and look at other Ask, ask Aaron's, uh, you can see more of what I have to say about that. But Fairness is not a biblical principle. God never promises fair. So, next question. Does God hold us to the promises we make to him? Um, again, I think God 
uh, wants to uh, have us promise things to him and have us come through in them. Uh, God exists outside of time, so God knows uh, whether or not we're going to hold to those promises when we make them already uh, before we can or do. And also, um, you know, God's fully aware of the fact that we're innately sinful human beings who um, are incapable of doing all the things that we promise, and he loves us anyway and in spite of all of those things. So in that sense, um, no, God doesn't hold us to the promises because he still offers us forgiveness and grace in light of all the mistakes and things that we do that um, aren't what we told him we would do or what we wish we would do and all that kind of stuff. So um, I think God desires for us to keep our promises and God, um, you know, in, in a way requires it, but knows that we won't live up to that requirement. And so he offers us grace and forgiveness instead. Last question. This is a, a good one from the Christmas season. Uh, in Matthew, Zechariah is made unable to speak because he questioned what the angel told him regarding the birth of his son, John, who became John the Baptist. Uh, Mary also questions the angel who foretells Jesus's birth, and she's not punished in any way. Why? Uh, because fairness is not a biblical principle. I, you're going to have to ask God this question. I don't know why uh, Zechariah was made unable to speak and Mary isn't. Uh, it could have something to do with uh, their type of response, the words that they use, the, the posture of their heart. Um, but this is God's choice, right? Like, not like Sophie's choice. I think that's the second Sophie's choice reference on an Ask Aaron. I'm not even sure I know what it means. Anyway, um, God is in control. God is, um, like I said, creator, sustainer, ruler, king of the universe, and can do what he wants, how he wants, when he wants. And uh, if he wanted to use Zechariah's muteness to uh, make a point or to prove his power or to demonstrate uh, some sort of principle, then that's what he that's what he did. And if he chooses not to do that for Mary, um, is it quote unquote fair? Maybe not, but it's God's choice. I wish I could answer this question more. Uh, you know, thoroughly or specifically, but the real answer is we don't know. That was God's choice. Just like sometimes as a parent, uh, you choose to punish one kid one way and one another, or as a friend, you hold people to different standards because you know about their past or whatever the case may be. So uh, with that, I want to say thank you for checking in a day late with us, for asking Aaron as always, and uh, we're going to continue our message series still just as good this coming week talking about times when it feels like God is hiding. So that'll be uh, tomorrow, hillcityhudson.org backslash media on the app, Facebook, YouTube, all that great stuff. You can join us in person, St. Pat's Education Center, downtown Hudson. We'd love to see you there. As always, thanks for asking, Aaron. We'll talk to you next time.